right, I had somebody reach out to me the other day on Facebook asking about suicide and a Christian. Now, before that we get into this so that we don't get flagged, um, if you are contemplating suicide, if you are having suicidal thoughts, you need to reach out immediately to the suicide hotline and um, make sure that you do that. But we're talking about this, Avery. We had a lady reach out. Uh, before that we get going, because Troy tells us that we have to do this, make sure that if you are not subscribed yes. to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up, and then make sure that you turn on the notification bell, because Troy says we have to do that. Yes, even if though we, he won't. Yeah, he won't do that. But um, I want to say thank you, though, Avery. You're doing a great job uh, moderating these things, getting all these questions. Uh, you guys are doing a great job asking these questions. And, in fact, this video was inspired um, – from a lady that follows on Facebook, and yeah. she asked this question the other day, and I'm going to ask the question, then you can turn around and you can ask the questions that you've got, because it really is a fantastic question. Pam Towns asked this question, and she said, I've been discussing this subject all morning with friends and family. If a person commits suicide, are they sentencing themselves to hell? That's actually an incredible question. Yeah. So you've actually had some people on TikTok and uh, different things. So you kindly roll with it, and we'll just see where this leads. Okay. So we're going to basically go right up that alley. Um, the first question I have is suicide and unforgivable sin. No. The Bible is clear that the only unforgivable sin is the blasphemy of of the Holy Spirit. Jesus talks about that when he's referring to the Pharisees, um, attributing to Jesus the, uh, the works of the devil, attributing to the devil the works of what Jesus was doing. So that's another video. We want to talk about that. Yeah. Is suicide an unforgivable sin? The answer to that biblically is no, and here is why. The, where people get that from is they have this un, they have this mindset that because someone takes their life, they don't have time to ask forgiveness for their sin that they just committed mm. in taking. That's where they get that from. They're ultimately getting that though from Catholic doctrine. Yeah, that's ultimately where that comes from. So it's really a bad understanding of how someone is saved. So I'm going to ask you a question, and then we'll have a conversation about this. How is a person saved? All right? Now, we understand that biblically as a person is saved not by asking forgiveness of their sins. Now, stay with me, okay? We're going to answer this. Just stay with me. A person is not saved because they ask for forgiveness of sins. A person is not saved because they pray a prayer. Yeah. How is a person saved? By putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's the bottom line. Yeah. It is not by works of righteousness, which we have done, Titus 3, 5. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy that he hath saved us. Okay, so we are not saved any other way but faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Now, part of that is the forgiveness of sins. Part of that is the repentance of sins. So we understand that, right? So here is the question. When someone commits suicide, is that a sin? Yeah, I think it probably is. I believe taking their life is something that's not the will of God. Now, we, we, we're not, I'm not a psychologist. Or, I know there's a lot of reasons, but we're talking theologically here, okay? When a person does that, um, I understand where people are coming from, but you got to remember that person wasn't saved by any other way than the finished work of Christ. Yeah. Okay. When someone commits suicide, that doesn't change the finished work of Christ on the cross. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't change their state of salvation. Now, I do think that when someone takes their life, I think it's a tragedy. I think it's heartbreaking. I would never, ever, ever belittle that the pain that somebody's going through, but that has no bearing on someone's salvation. Yeah. Okay, now let's throw a monkey wrench in this thing. Now we're going to blow some people's understanding out of the water, okay? Now let me get a sip of coffee here, yes. okay? And by the way, just so everybody knows, Avery... Oh my. Avery, I will not. He when when we go. So Avery's wife Sydney is over here, kind of keeping the time clock. Okay. Yes. Um, 
I have asked Avery to drink coffee a million times. This is very true. I drink coffee. Now, I have, an, uh, I have a, uh, an issue with coffee. I drink coffee all the time. And that so I take concern. Avery with me to go to McDonald's or to Dunkin' Donuts or to Starbucks. I really don't care where the coffee is from. Yeah. Um, I will drink it. I will drink gas station coffee. He will not do it. So in that cup right there is none other than a three-year-old's hot chocolate. Okay, so just so y'all know, he's drinking a three-year-old's hot chocolate. Okay, Okay. so let's throw a monkey wrench in this thing. Yes. All right, I'm going to ask you, just to get your opinion, why does someone go to hell? Mm. Do they go to hell because they're a sinner? Because they didn't trust in Jesus. That's exactly right. Yeah. Nobody goes to hell because they're a sinner. Now, I'm, hold on yeah. before you lose your mind, okay? Now, their sin causes them to do something that sends them to hell. John 3 makes a statement. I'm going to read this to you just so you don't think I'm making this up. And I want to show you something you probably you believe you just never thought about, all right? The Lord Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, all right? And he said in John 3 and 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Okay, what brings the wrath of God on somebody? It's not necessarily their sin. Now, we're all sinners. We got, we're not talking about that. What sends a person to hell is the fact that they do not trust in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that is what brings the wrath of God on them, according to the Bible. Okay? 1 John 2, verse number 1 down through verse number 3, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the propitiation, the satisfaction of our sins, not just our sins, but the sins of the whole world. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, when he died on Calvary, he became the satisfaction of God's wrath for mankind's sin and disobedience. Therefore, Man does not go to hell because he's a sinner. Yeah. Man goes to hell because he rejects Jesus Christ. Very good. That's why in Romans, that's why Paul says in chapter 1 and 2 that he's talking about the heathen that, that lives in the far jungles that has never heard of Jesus Christ. He looks up and he says even the creation says that there is a God. And if a man desires to know more revelation about this creator, that God would be faithful to send him somebody to tell him about the Son of God because it's not necessarily sin. Now, you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying people don't sin. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what sends a man to hell is his rejection of Jesus Christ. Now, go back to the suicide question. If a person commits suicide... It's not the fact that they have unrepentant sin because their unrepentant sin, that's all done away with yeah. in Jesus Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So a believer that commits suicide, and that's another discussion that we probably need to have. A believer that commits suicide, they are in heaven not for or against the suicide but because they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I know there's going to be a lot of people that watch this who have loved ones who who said they were believers that took their own life, and they they struggle with are they in heaven. So I want to help somebody. If your loved one put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, even though they committed suicide or took their own life, their faith in Christ is enough to take them through that and put them in heaven. It has nothing to do with suicide. It has nothing to do with how long it's faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Specifically, when we're talking about salvation. That's all we're talking about here is salvation. Yeah. All right? So that that's my answer to that question. A okay. really long answer, but, yeah. I mean, it does it make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, it's very interesting. Um, I was going to ask, so... Um, does the Bible ever specifically call out suicide as a wrong thing? Because I know there are a few suicides in the Bible. Um, yeah, there are. And I know um, you could say, well, it's a sin because it's a sin against your body, which is the temple. Mm-hmm. Um, but is there a speci- more specific? I think it would be wrong to probably say that there is a specific verse that says, thou shalt not commit suicide, thou shalt not take your life. Now, you are right. There are several different instances of suicide 
in the Bible. Um, I'll give you a couple. Number one, we see a King Saul in the Old Testament. He is wounded with an arrow, and he tells an Ammonite that comes by him to kill him with the sword. All right, he's taking his own life. I think yeah. Saul eventually falls on his own sword. Um, you see uh, Judas Iscariot in the New Testament. So there, there's quite a few instances of suicide in the Bible. Okay, so no, there is not necessarily a thou shalt not. It's a greater principle, though. So yes, it's a greater principle. And here is the greater principle. The greater principle is God is the giver of life. God is the sustainer of life. Moses said that God is the one that ends our days. In Psalm chapter 90, he makes the statement. He said, Lord, teach us to number our days. He said the end of man is, is three score and ten years. Seventy years is what Moses said in the Psalms. And so he's given the principle that it's God who gives life. It's God who sustains life. And it's ultimately God who ends our days. Yeah. When a person commits suicide, in, if you want to say in theory, they are trying to take into account, into their own hands, that their life has gotten so bad that it has to end on their terms. Yeah. And I understand the I understand the mindset. I understand the I get it. Like I I understand that it hurts. And I know people can get to the end of the 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 rope here and say I just can't take this anymore. But the greater principle of suicide is saying I know better than God. Now is the time for my life to end. Now, that's a harsh thing to say, but you know what I'm saying? That's God is the one that tells us when our time is done. Yeah. When our life is the 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 one preacher said it like this, and I'm trying to remember the exact phrasing of it. I wish you all I, I wish I'd prepare for these. I'd I'd had these things in my head. <laughs> but one preacher said it like this. He said, God specifies the exact number of days we have. Yeah. We're not getting one more, we're not getting one less. When a person takes their own life, they are saying, I know how many days I'm supposed to have. Now, I'll bring up an even bigger question to you. Now, this is a mind-blowing question that I don't think we have the answer to. Yeah. This is one of those, God's bigger than us. True. Okay? If a person takes their own life, are they taking less, are they shortening their days? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to ask. I mean, when you get on a plane or, you know, you go through anything that scares you, the popular argument is, well, um, God's not going to let anything happen if it's not our time to go, you know, stuff like that. Um, how does that play into uh, uh, play into to this, this? I believe art? that. Listen, so I'm going to give you the, the microscopic view, and then I'm going to give you the 747 view. Okay, the microscopic view is that God numbers our days. You cannot. Nothing can happen. Jerry Falwell said it like this. Jerry Falwell, who founded Liberty University, Thomas Road Baptist Church, Jerry Falwell said this. He said, until God's done with me, I'm bulletproof. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Now, we don't like to think that. We like to think that if something happened, if I'd have just been safer, God numbers our days. Okay, that's the, that's the real close view. The high up view is, now, I don't know how this works. I don't understand this, but... When someone takes their life, God is so sovereign. I'm going to imagine that he knew and said that's how many days they're going to have. It's not like God had to change his entire plan because somebody took their life. Yeah. Um, oh, man, you know, they. I had intended 80 years, but they only got 30. You know, I don't think that. I think God is a, is 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 sovereign in this whole thing. You know, that's a common argument today um, against guys that are not Calvinistic, um, that we don't believe in the sovereignty of God. I do believe in the sovereignty. I believe God is in control of everything. Yeah. I believe God's so in control that he gives man a free will. Yeah. So I can't quite put that into words, what that means. Yeah. God does number our days, but by us taking our own life, we are, we are taking... We are trying to control something that is really out of our control. Yeah. So we've said it a million times. I think that this is another one of those things where if we could understand God completely, yes. God would not be God. And you know, that's a great point. And I, we've said that before. Um, the fact we cannot reason out some things, 
about this book and about our faith and about the greater spiritual reality, that shows that he is not a God of our making. Exactly. If he was a God of our making, we'd have everything understood. Yeah. yeah so that's that's the answer to that. Yeah. Um, so another question I have is, so um, and there's several instances in the Bible. The question is, is all suicide the same? Um, there's different instances in the Bible. Um, for instance, we were talking about Judas prior to this, um, who hung himself out of yeah. um, remorse or whatever you'd like to say. And then there was, uh, like you said, Saul, um, Samson. So there's different, uh, uh, even applying this to today's world, there's sacrifices, people run into burning burning buildings that they know they're not coming out of, um, that in a way could be qualified as suicide. So are there different types of suicide? No, I would disagree with that. I think I would disagree with that premise if that's what people are saying, Um, because I think it has everything to do with the motive. Yeah. Um, Somebody that runs into a, a burning building has a different motive um, well, hang on. Let me take that back. Somebody that runs into a burning building to save somebody, that's a lot different than somebody just running into a burning building because they want to burn. Yeah. You know? So the motive. Um, are there different types of suicide? I mean, type is not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I, I, I personally think no. I, I think that the end is the same because the motive is the same. Yeah. The motive is I can't take this, and so I'm going to – end it now. Somebody that runs into a burning building or a mother whose child is in the bottom of a lake and she's trying to save that child and she jumps in and can't swim, um, the odds are she's not even thinking about her own life. Yeah. So the motive is completely different. King Saul and those instances in the Bible, those men were thinking about self. When Saul committed suicide, he did not want to be taken by the Philistines and tortured and mutilated. Yeah. Um, Judas, there was such condemnation in his heart and remorse in his heart that he just, he ended it. Instead of repenting, instead of getting right. Um, So that's a lot different. I think that's a lot different than, um, you know, a a father runs into a burning building. So, yeah, I I think that's a thousand. I mean, look at a police officer. Exactly. Look at those firefighters and and police officers. Um, When we are recording this, we're recording this on the anniversary of September the 11th. And I was, you know, I was alive and was able to remember all that. I mean, we physically on television watched firefighters, police officers, um, first responders, volunteer people run into burning buildings, collapsing buildings, knowing, you know, he may not make it out, but that wasn't their motive. Yeah. So that's not suicide. That's that's um, hero, 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 heroism. Hero, yes. Heroic. Whatever yes. the word. I, I can't think of the word. Say. Um, heroism. Heroism. What is the word, Sydney? Heroism. Yes. Heroism. I, can't, I don't know. Why I can't and speak. It, what is the verse? Um, I'm blanking on what the verse is, but it talks about there's no, uh, no. It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, there's no greater love than for a man to lay down it's in his. First John. Yeah. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Yeah, that's crazy. I can remember that verse, but I can't remember how to say heroism. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. So here we are. Um, yeah, that's in First John. Yeah, uh, greater love. It, Jesus speaks it in the book of John, um, and that's absolutely right. It's the motive, though. All everything in life, though, goes back to motive. Yeah, God looks at the motive of our heart. Yeah. So we were talking prior to this podcast. This will be a whole, maybe a whole other episode okay. um, about Judas, yeah. and was Judas possessed when he killed himself? Um, that is a question that some people have. Is that if you are able to follow through with suicide, um, do you have a relationship with God? So I've actually been thinking about this. Um, so those are two different questions. We'll talk about the Judas thing first. Uh, second, let's talk about the. Can a person, and just to make sure I understand the question, can a person who is saved commit suicide? I think they can. I mean, ultimately, we are humans. Um, the, the, the new man, the spirit of God that lives within us, that we receive when we're saved, that baptizes us into the body of Christ, okay, he is in us and he is doing a work, but he's not in, we're, we're not robots, uh, he is not in the, the brain center pushing buttons and pulling levers. That's why we have to be filled with him, controlled by him. A person can be saved and get so messed up. Um, look at the prodigal. The yeah. prodigal is still a son, 
but he ends up down in the far country. Yeah. So, yes, that can happen. I do believe, I, I just, I'm walking through my mind right now, I, I really believe that a person can be saved and take their own life. Yeah. I think you can get so discouraged, so depressed, so despondent that you just feel like there is no hope. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I really do. I cannot understand how a, how somebody would say that when you get to that point um, that you're not saved. To me, that's the equivalent. If you think about it, if you think about that line, let's go down that road. Let's say that somebody says that. Sorry. Let's say that somebody says that. That okay. Well, if you're if you're not if you're not saved, that's how you can commit suicide because you love death more than life. You're controlled by death or whatever. Then I think you're going to have a lot of a lot of trouble saying that um, a Christian can get addicted to stuff. Yeah, I think you're going to be um, very hard pressed when somebody goes through cancer treatments. That's a Christian, and it gets so bad they say no more treatments. Because in effect, aren't you saying I'm going to die? True. I don't think I don't think that has anything to do with that. I, I think that that's a wrong way of thinking. Yeah, you are saying that somebody filled with the Spirit of God cannot have bad thoughts. And unfortunately, I believe people can get so um, in the whirlwind of, the, of those bad thoughts, that discouragement, that depression. Some people uh, have chemical imbalances. Yeah. Our minds, our bodies, Avery, are, are cursed vessels. Yeah. I, I believe in chemical imbalances. I believe that your mind can get... I, listen, I would, I would argue with any... But I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. But I've got common sense. If a person that's a believer can get cancer, a person that's a believer can have mind issues. Yeah. I, that's very true. I, I don't see how anybody could argue that. And I, I sympathize with people that... That, that deal with chemical imbalances, that deal with just unbelievable amounts of depression and discouragement. My heart goes out to them. And God loves those people. God cares for those people. And if there are people that are watching us right now that are struggling with just depression, not suicide, you know, just you're depressed and you deal with depression. I think the same question could be asked, can a Christian deal with depression? Yeah. You think they can? Yeah, I believe. I believe, I, with all my heart. Yeah. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, probably the greatest preacher outside the Apostle Paul, dealt with such depression that he would go into dark rooms for days on end. In fact, I've got a quote that I'm, I, I looked at today from Charles Spurgeon. He said, there are castles of darkness that many people dwell in, and then there are basements under those castles that some people have to dwell in. Yeah. I think that's so true. I really do. And my heart goes out to people. My prayers are with you. God still loves you. It's going to be okay. Hang in there. Do not give up the fight. It's going to be okay. But I do believe that. So yeah. I do believe a Christian can get so down that they make a bad decision. Yeah, you kind of touched on this, but I, I wanted to ask um, the same question. Um, some people commit what would be called accidental suicide. When I would think about accidental suicide, um, I would think about, okay, I'll give you a for instance. Someone that has had drugs in their past. I've seen this yeah. several different times, okay? Yeah. Drugs in their past, and they, they're on drugs really, really badly. They get clean, and then they have a weak moment. And they go back and do those drugs, and their heart shuts down. Mm -hmm. You know, that could, in theory, be said to be an accidental. So they didn't mean for it to happen, but that action took their life. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do, I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, so go on. Oh, I was just going to ask if, he, if that's, it, would that be considered suicide? Is that a thing? I don't know. I, I don't, at the end of the day, I'm going to say something that may sound a little cold. I don't mean for it to sound cold. What difference does it make? Yeah. They're gone. Um, the, the judge of all the earth is going to be the one that 
reasons all that stuff out. So I'm not going to sit here and try to figure that out because I think that would be unwise. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have the an- we don't well I know we don't we don't have the answer for that. We don't understand that. Um, so it would be unwise for us to comment on that. At the end of the day, does it matter if they meant to, didn't mean to? Maybe for mothers and fathers and wives and husbands that are trying to reason it out in their minds, it may. I can understand that. But just for it to make a spiritual difference, I don't think it makes a difference. Yeah. The end's the same. A life is lost. So, unfortunately. Um, we'll jump back to the, we were talking earlier about Judas. Yeah. Um, um, the Bible talks about, we were talking about this before, um, that uh, during the, uh, the Last Supper, that the, the says the devil entered into him. Correct. Um, was Judas possessed when he killed himself? I believe he was. So you asked that to me a little bit ago. Um, here is my reasoning on that. My reasoning is twofold. Number one, Judas is called the son of perdition. There's only one other person called the son of perdition, and that's the Antichrist. The Antichrist dies in the or he's taken in the lake of fire he doesn't die he's thrown in alive is what the bible says into the lake of fire all right he is full of the devil till the moment he's thrown into that lake of fire i if you take the similarities the same name the same outcome judas i believe was from the moment he made the choice to betray the lord in that upper room when he dipped in that sop okay what did jesus say Jesus said, the man that dips in this sop with me will be the one that betrays me. I believe in that moment, Judas made a conscious choice, and he dipped. In that moment, the Scripture says, the devil enters into him. I, to the moment he died, I thought about this, okay, since you asked me that. Two things. Number one, just because he had remorse does not mean that the devil left him. Yeah. That's not what... That's not, that doesn't have anything to do with that um, because a person is still making choices. They're just listening to the full possession of the devil. All right? So I don't think that that has any bearing on that. Number two, Jesus made this statement. What, what happened to Judas? How did he end? He hung himself. That's right. He kills himself. What is the mission, John chapter number 10, of the enemy. The enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy. What happened to Judas? He died. Yeah. That was the ultimate end of the enemy. Yeah. And so I believe he was possessed to the very end. I don't think that the remorse, there was no repentance. There was no, I don't believe that was real regret like we think about. Yeah. I think it was just remorse. He hated that it didn't work out. See, the, I don't believe that Judas meant to see Jesus killed. I don't think he, I don't think he thought that was going to happen. I think he thought that they were going to you know, give him a beat down, whatever he thought. And I think when he saw what ended up happening, he realized, I have been fully overwhelmed by the devil. And I think that's what led to his suicide. So he was, you're saying he was remorseful over the, the, the choice what happened made. to him. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was remorseful in the fact that it didn't work out. Yeah. I don't think he was remorseful over the fact that Jesus died. The thief on the cross was remorseful. He said, we don't deserve, or he does not deserve what happened to us. That's repentance. You realize I am nothing compared to this man named Jesus. Judas didn't do that. What Judas was remorseful over was that his plan didn't work out. Yeah. It was all about him. And that's what suicide, unfortunately, that's, that's the, the fallacy of suicide. People are going to be better off when I'm gone. That's not true. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure that people will say, well, that, but think about the, the, the little mothers. Think about the, the little children that are left without a dad and a mom because of suicide. Yeah. Nobody's better off. It's, that's the goal of the enemy to get somebody to believe that. That's how he steals, kills and destroys. Yeah. And that, that was one of my uh, following questions okay. was, do you obtain the right to take your own life? Because in my opinion, um, I don't think that's your call to make that someone else's life would be better without you in it. I think you're absolutely right. I agree with you a thousand percent. 
Now, I'm, I'm not going to apply this. I'm going to apply this to me. I'm not going to apply this to anybody watching because, again, this is a sensitive subject. Yeah. I wish you would pick, like, happy topics. Let's talk about <laughs> heaven one day. Yes. How about that? Yes, um, I agree. But, so I don't want to apply this to anybody. I'm going to apply this to me. That's a very selfish thing for me to say. Everybody's life would be better off without me in it. Who, who am I to say that? Yeah. I'm not God. I don't know that person's full life. I, that's a very um, flawed way of looking at life. I, I, don't, I think you're right. I think that, I think that uh, somebody that does that, Avery, is a little bit either naive, selfish. I would be. I don't want to apply that. But I'm, yeah. uh, who am I to say, well, Avery, my life would be better off or your life would be better off if I wasn't in it? Well, I don't know that. You know, that may be the way it feels, but that's just not true. Yeah. Um, is is it true that God does not let you live past your purpose? Are it like, for instance, let's take a grandparent. Okay. Um, they've, you know, obviously I'm not God, but let's say for, for lack of, you know, our understanding, they fulfill their purpose and they go on and live and do really nothing with the rest of their life. Does God allow you to spend meaningless days on the earth or? Yeah, I mean. I think that that can be. Um, I think I think that somebody can waste their time. We know that um, two reasons. Number one, let, let me say this. Okay, let me first of all say. Let me back up. I think God has a purpose for everybody. Yeah. I think that people that are quote unquote wasting away. Um, I don't know that you can say that they're not serving a purpose. Yeah. I think that would be a dangerous thing. We don't know what somebody's purpose is. Number one. Number two. We can waste our time. Paul said in the book of. Ephesians, redeeming the time, buying back the time because the days are evil. He said, you waste your time. Moses said, Psalm chapter 90, Lord, teach us to number our days. Well, he's saying time is short. Yeah. Don't let us waste time. So I don't think that just because somebody seems like they're not doing anything that we can notice, doesn't mean they're not doing anything, but they can waste their time. Yeah. God God has a certain plan. God has a certain number of days that he gives to every single person. Whether a person walks in that purpose or not, I don't think that shortcuts the days. Those days are set. Yeah. I think a lot of people misunderstand how um, little things can impact other people's life greatly. Absolutely. And I think that a suicide comes down to that. I think everybody thinks like, well, I'm never going to get on stage and speak in front of a thousand people. my grandpa on his deathbed, his main, one of his biggest concerns was taking care of the remaining family, which I know is a common, um, you know, that's a common thing, but that impacted me in a great way that he wasn't, you know, he wasn't concerned about himself in that moment. He was concerned and a little thing like that impacted me in a great way. And I think people lose sight of your purpose in life. And may, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Your purpose in life may be small acts, small little things like that that have a greater impact on someone that you may never even see. I'll give you two, I'll give you a, a quote, and then I'll give you an illustration to answer that. Okay, the quote is this, big doors turn on little hinges. I say that all the time. Big doors turn on little hinges. Yeah. Just because somebody is not doing big in, in the world's eyes, it could be a little word like that that makes the difference in your life. So don't don't negate, if you're watching, don't negate the small thing, the small act. Don't think just because you're not doing this podcast and because you're not preaching in front of people, pastors, your church may not be as big as that. Don't no, None of that matters. Yeah. Heaven is going to open our eyes to a lot of things that are important, that we didn't think mattered, and a lot of things that aren't going to matter that we thought were important. God has blessed us, Avery. God's given us a platform to use. That doesn't make us any more important than anybody. True. And we're ne- we never are to act that way. Okay, so never negate that purpose. Okay, I want to give you an illustration. So Avery, and I'm going to get you to comment down below. Avery is trying to convince his wife, Sydney. <laughs> That he should buy a Mustang. He wants a Mustang so bad he can't see straight. This is very true. Now, if you think you ought to buy a Mustang, then you ought to say below. But not the purpose of this. Don't encourage me. Okay, yes, that's correct. (laughs) Avery, if you buy that Mustang, 
and, and the creator that made that looked at you and said, okay, Avery, no matter how you drive this car, no matter what you do to this car, you are going to get exactly 122,000 miles on it or five years. Whichever comes first, you're, that's what you're going to get. What would you do? I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd ride that thing as hard as I could. Yeah. I would, I would run that thing at 7,000 RPMs everywhere I went. I would get the most out of it knowing that its time was limited yeah. no matter what I did to it. Yeah. That's our life. God says your days are numbered. All right? I believe we ought to take care of our bodies. I believe we ought to take care of the temple. But God says my days are numbered. Do you know what I want to do? I want to burn out for God. Yeah. I want to live to the fullest of my purpose. That would be what I would tell people that are watching this, guys like you, uh, Sydney, your family, you're young in this thing. I want to burn out. People talk about burning the candles on both ends. I want to burn the candle every wick that God gives me. Yeah. Uh, that That's because my days are numbered, however that works. Yeah. So let me ask you in, in conclusion here. Um, okay. I think everybody has had a period of darkness in their life. Some are much more uh, dark than others. And you've experienced this in your life, and I've, I've had an episode of mine as well. When it gets very dark, it's hard to remember the things that you know when it's not dark. Yeah. What would you say to someone who's currently in that darkness right now? They know these things. They know what the Bible says, but they're struggling to remember it. Yeah. What would you tell them? To encourage them I would say two things number one we need to address the, the the people that may be watching this again we already said at the beginning that are so close to suicide you, they need to reach out to the suicide hotline they really do but we're talking to people that are on this side of it that that aren't quite there they're just dark I would give you this word from the Psalms weeping may endure for the night yeah but joy will come in the morning when you get in those dark seasons you have to just keep going. Keep walking with God. Keep living your life. Do what you can. Follow God how you can. The Lord understands. The Lord knows. He's kind. He's compassionate. He's merciful. Just keep walking. That is the only advice I can give somebody that is in a season right now of discouragement and despondency. I would recommend, I'm actually going to preach on this uh, this evening, the thing that I would tell you is if you are in a, a place of despondency, make sure that it's not because of something you've done. Despondency can come on us because of disobedience to God. But where I tell people is you'll know what it is. You'll know, the Holy Spirit will tell you where you missed it. Yeah. Right? Um, it's not going to be this I'm wondering thing. But if you're not right with God, get right with God. But I'm assuming you're talking about those people that are right with God. They're living for God. They're, they love God, doing everything they can, and they're just discouraged. Just hold on. Weeping is going to endure for a little bit longer, but joy will come. 